Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. My apologies for the delay since the last video I did a little over a week or so ago. I was working on some other videos as you've seen, some special editions, some news related videos, and then also a Cryptid of the Week or some others of the week as well. So back to, in this case, the latest Aliens and UFOs video. This one based on one of your newer suggestion. And in this case, I'm mixing two in one for you as a nice thank you for for the weight. Interestingly enough, both of these situations have to do with very similar themes. They both involve these strange objects in the sky, multitudes of them. They both involved this happening over several hundred years ago, and most importantly, they both seem to involve battles in the sky. Once I heard that phrase within these two uh, particular stories, it instantly captivated my attention because this totally reminded me of the classic Star Wars in this case, a battle in the sky that people looked up into and then saw from afar. Very, very fascinating stuff. One could totally imagine in the world of Star Wars seeing something like this as well. But yes, let's go ahead and let's talk about these two incidences. They're known as the Celestial Phenomenon, one of them in 1561, and then the other one in 1566. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's talk about all this information associated with these two very unique but very interesting circumstances. So yes, indeed, what were these Celestial Phenomenons? Well, one of them, the first one, again, happened back in 1561, so a good while miles back, almost uh, close enough at least to 500 years or so back. But yes, the way it goes here, this one happened over Nuremberg, Germany, 1561, specifically the first instance around April 14th uh, as the exact date. So here's how the circumstance happened. In fact, you're looking at a pamphlet or some kind of printed material that showcased an interpretation of it. You'll, you'll see exactly why I was also uh, mentioning Star Wars because look at that big black thing right on the bottom. Does that not instantly remind you for any Star Wars fans of a super star? destroyer like let's say the silhouette of a super star destroyer uh, the, which was the largest ship essentially within the Star Wars universe the flagship in other words uh, when I was looking at that it instantly just reminded me of it I thought how cool is this this tie-in to the Star Wars theme but yes in April 14 1561 here's what happened the residents there of Nuremberg they looked up into the sky to see some very large, very vast, some aerial battle that was happening up there. Not just like, let's say, one object. No, absolutely, there were multitudes of these, absolute multitudes of these. It was almost like they were filling up the entire sky with these after effects. And there were uh, several different variations of these things that were up there. The most prominent ones seem to be spheres, very large spheres, hundreds of them that seemed to fill the sky. Also, there were these very long cylinders that also were with, mixed in within those spheres themselves. Those cylinders, you're looking again at the picture of it, it reminded me, and again, I'm just a big nerd, but it reminded me of the Star Trek IV film, in this case, The Voyage Home. Everyone knows about that large, giant cylinder that was uh, floating over Earth during most of the film, and that's what it reminded me of here. Who knows? Life imitating art, imitating life. You know what I mean? So that was yet another thing. And then also there were crosses, these strange symbols that either purposely or by pure coincidence look like crosses themselves. More on that here in a minute. And then finally, of course, that large thing, that spearheaded thing, that black item that took up most of the battle itself uh, that, that, that was displayed within that, play, within that sheet. By the way, this was all printed within some kind of wood woodcut, a woodcut engraving by a guy named Hans Glazer. You can actually find this woodcut there, I believe, in a place, some, I guess, collection place in Zurich, Switzerland. So if you happen to be over there and you want to see the original object, how cool is that? You can go there and then try to find it listed 
there but yes here's how it described this 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 broadsheet this engraved one about this item it said on the morning of april 14th 1561 specifically four to five a.m there was something uh, an apparition of some kind that uh, that went over the sun it obviously caught all the attention of everyone there within the city of nuremberg seen by many many men many women there and so the way it occurred was the sun the color of it turned blood red it started to also turn very dull and then surrounding it seemed to be this blackish color at first you would think that that wouldn't be unsettling but think about that imagine your everyday normal stance of the sun we all see it of course not looking at it directly but we all know how it looks like very bright very cheerful you would expect that but imagine then if it would one day just turn blood red and then there would be like this blackish ring around it but well, that's essentially what was happening there and then from within what it looks like the sun itself there were these items that started to come out it was described as blood red spheres and then other spheres also blackish as as well then also these blood red crosses they had these red stripes that were uh, within them so I think it looks like the way it was described was thicker in the rear thinner towards the middle but otherwise there were those crosses there and then of course these gigantic rods remember I was mentioning them earlier one was described as being on the right side of the, of the sky the other one on the left side of the sky the really large ones and then there were some smaller rods as well about three Three, maybe four that were within those spheres too and then they started all battling each other the way the described the description was from the visitors those that were looking outside it's as if they were fighting vehemently that's the way it's described fighting vehemently with each other for over an hour and then once the Sun was at its most intense it seems like all these things whatever they were just became and this is quotations almost fatigued almost as if they they burned out uh, through all of their energy and then that was it there was this immense smoke and then something they were like that giant black sphere the one that I was mentioning earlier the one that looks like the superstar destroyer that also came out at that point but yes that's the main description associated with this event a lot of people of course uh, hearkened it to something on a religious side mentioning those crosses earlier that was none other than Carl Jung who apparently took a very prominent stance of this thing in his book it was flying saucers a modern myth of things seen in the skies he analyzed this particular battle and he took two standpoints it was either a religious or a military interpretation in this case on the religious side clearly the crosses would be interpreted as being religious uh, chariots of the gods I guess as that expression goes where something was happening in the sky and people saw the crosses and so they were thinking that there was some kind of holy battle something that was happening up there that they just happened to be a witness of from a military standpoint he was surmising that these long tubes the one I was mentioning earlier those were none other than something involving cannons or their loosest interpretation of cannons with those spheres the ones that were battling amongst each other none other than the actual closest interpretation of cannon balls and then the black spearhead was another way of showcasing another weapon that was up there too but again that's his interpretation even when to an, another one involving that if these UFOs were actually some kind of living organisms then maybe we didn't see a battle in the sky instead we saw something involving a mating or a marriage flight if you could believe that that's just yet another interpretation of this guy Carl Jung but yes that is the information at least with the 1561 celestial phenomenon that occurred there in Nuremberg cut to a couple years later five years later Later to be exact and you go then to Basel Switzerland here there was yet another aerial battle that occurred over that location very similar in this case where the people woke up and they it was very early in the morning in this case though it happened over multiple dates July 25th through the 28th and then one more date on August 7th and then also in this circumstance 
didn't really involve those crosses, those long rods I was mentioning earlier. More though, in this case, the same black spheres, the ones that uh, that happened within the other battle. Did they set themselves up maybe in another part of the earth? Whatever these spheres were, these black and reddish spheres, it could be because the very same thing happened here. The sun took on a reddish hue. There was that dull blackness surrounding it afterward. Very eerily too, since this happened over multiple days, the next day when the sun came up the way the witnesses described this celestial phenomenon it created an almost blood red color throughout the entire land itself I mean that that would totally just seem almost apocalyptic if you could believe something like that I mean imagine waking up and you don't see the sun in its full brightness anymore you look over the horizon you look down your street and instead you see like this dullish color it would just totally be unsettling and then once that was happening those blackish and then also reddish fears once again they were seemed to be battling out up there in the sky multiple ways witnesses, multiple people, men, women, all of them throughout the city, throughout the countryside, they all saw this and yet one more time after all this happened, then everything seemed to be extinguished, like they ran out of energy and then that's when they were not seen afterward. So was this the very same circumstance? By the way, you were looking at, in this case, another pamphlet, another sheet, if you will, something that showcased an interpretation of that battle. Not quite, I guess, as illustrious or as big as the other battle, but this one's still having quite an impact within that countryside. And this was uh, something that was created by two people, Samuel Aperius and then also Samuel Cautious. So those were the ones that, that, that were able to... Um, to, to interpret this particular celestial phenomena. But that was it after these two specific years and these two specific locations. There were no more sightings of this kind, uh, I guess, since then. I haven't heard of any other large aerial battles of this kind ever since then. Somebody point me in the right direction. If there was maybe something in the 1800s, 1900s, 2000s, let me know. Of course, there are stories every now and then, in this case of, of let's say, like a one-offs, like um, the one involving the so-called Battle of Los Angeles, where there could have been, in this case, a UFO or multiple UFOs that were up there, and then there was a battle from the Earth to them, but that's the only one that comes to mind, so if anybody has anything else, please uh, po post those comments so that we can share them to everyone out there. But yes, um, as far as this info, that's pretty much it. Does anybody have anything else that I might have missed? Maybe something else, another location that they visited shortly thereafter from one of these years if so it'd be interesting to hear and then uh, when you think about it again uh, if this was happening up in the sky how cool would it be to see this and how scary would it be to see this at the same time the forces involved in this case of a large extraterrestrial battle up in the sky just like again the world of Star Wars neat to see it from a movie standpoint but imagine looking up one day and then seeing two very large superstar destroyers battling against some other type of rebellions and then all of that collateral damage may be even happening below and it's going to be quite a different story so alright everybody thanks again as always take care bye